Hey guys, welcome back to Andy's Corner. You know, today I wanted to talk about filters, furnace filters more specifically. You know that crazy little thing that goes inside of a furnace that we never really get changed as often as we should? Or at least not until, you know, that cold morning comes on a Sunday morning and all of a sudden you wake up and you don't have any heat and you have to call service tech out and we happen to ask, well, how, how often do you change your filter? And you say, oh, I change it relig religiously. I just put a new one in there this morning. And then we look over and we see the one sitting against the furnace that you forgot to throw away that looks like it was been in there for three years yeah we know what's really going on there so you know furnace filters have to be replaced we all know this why it doesn't get done as often as it should i don't know it's just one of those things out of sight out of mind i get it but we have to change them regularly and we also have to know what type of filters to use uh, if you are a service tech out there or really anyone in the heating and air industry you need to be educated on filters so you can tell everybody what type of filter to use, how often to change it, you know, whatever it is. There are so many different ones out there. You know, we get clients and customers, homeowners that go to the store and they look at the shelves at Home Depot, Menards, whatever, and they see a million different kinds. And they say, well, yep, this one looks good. Or they say, hey, this one's the cheapest one. I'll get that. You know, if it's the cheapest one on the shelf, it's probably not the best one on the shelf, just to let you know. But you know, there's so many different ones out there, we have to pay attention. You know, for years and years, everyone used one-inch filters. I am not a believer in one-inch filters whatsoever. Um, you know, as far as service techs out there, we should be checking the static pressure of the system, uh, you know, the HVA system, pretty well every time we go work on it, right? You know, if, if you're not, you need to be. Uh, most contractors do anymore, but there are still quite a few of you out there that don't. I know that you don't. Uh, but unfortunately, we need to change that because static pressure is wildly important on these systems you know the, the the manufacturers put those ratings on there for a reason uh so you know we need to keep them in those specs to keep the units running like they're supposed to being as as efficient as they're supposed to and everything like that one inch filters have been proven to be very restrictive you know the static drop across them is very high so really a one inch filter to me is worthless a washable filter is even worse. Don't use washable filters. That is a thing of the past and they are not good for furnaces. Um, you know, there are a lot of different options out there. High capacity filters. We've got Air Bear. We've got Space Guard makes a good one. Honeywell makes some pretty good ones. You know, there's a lot of different ones out there. Um, I would highly recommend going to a, like a five inch uh, cartridge filter. Um, they're disposable. Most supposed to last around six months or so for, depending on your house. I mean, it depends on how many people are in the house, pets, kids, um, you know, usage of the system, all that kind of stuff. But on average, they're around six months. So, you know, a, a high capacity cartridge filter works very well. And if they're good for six months, you don't have to worry about changing every 30 days. Because guess what? That one inch filter that you've been putting in there or you've been selling to people and putting in, they're supposed to be changed every 30 days. You know, I, I talk to people and they say, well, I bought these this good filters made by DuPont and it says that it's good for 90 days guaranteed and it can catch, you know, all these different things and all this, these, you know, it's the 7,000 series and all that crap. You know what? That 7,000 series or whatever they're, they're uh, judging that, that's their own personal scale. That is not, you know, the MERV rating because the MERV rating is the is the scale that heating and air contractors actually go by. That's what our industry is designed off of is the MERV rating. So, you know, the 7000 series or 1400 or, you know, whatever it is, that's their made up, made up scale. Uh, but all furnace filter, one inch furnace filters are restrictive. And if it says it can make it three months, either it is not filtering dirt and dust like it's supposed to or it plugs everything up and it's going to hurt your furnace or it's going to hurt your air conditioner or your system or whatever it is. You know, don't believe any of those ones that say, um, you know, three months filters. Don't believe that. Uh, the dreaded one inch fiberglass filter, you know, you see the blue ones or they make white ones out there sometimes. Um, it, those filters are absolutely worthless. Um, I tell everybody, you know, if you can take that filter and lay it down on top of a newspaper and still read the newspaper, think about how much dust and dirt that thing's actually stopping. You know, it's not stopping anything. All that stuff's getting in there. The whole point of all of this is the fact that furnace filters are designed to protect the system. They are there to keep the dirt, dust, dander, all this stuff out of the system. Um, you know, I talk to people and they say, well, I, I went and bought, I paid $20 for this one inch filter. It is charcoal. It is uh, HEPA and all this stuff that they advertise. You know what? That's a joke. That is a gimmick that they are getting you on. Just because it says all that stuff does not mean it's good for your system. I have seen systems out there that they put one of those in and the unit shuts down. Uh, chances are they've probably got some uh, static pressure issues already. Duck works a little too small, dirty coil, something like that, dirty blower. 
Either way, those filters are bad for systems. You just wasted $20. I'm sorry to be the one to have to inform you of this, but yeah, that's 20 bucks thrown out the window. Throw it away. If you uh, are a homeowner out there and you don't know what filter to use, go ask your contractor. Go ask the uh, reliable you know, contractor. Don't go look for Chuck in the truck. Again, I know I always reference Chuck in the truck. I really have nothing against anybody named Chuck, and I have nothing against anybody that has a truck. I have a truck. But... Chuck in the truck is usually going to try to sell you that, you know, 75 cent fiberglass filter and it is not doing you any good whatsoever. Go to somebody that knows what they're talking about and get a good filter like the high capacity cartridge filters or something like that. Um, you know, filters advertise that they can go down to like the smallest micron and it can catch this and all these allergens and it can catch all these viruses and bacteria and all that kind of stuff. Most of that is a joke. I mean, we do need a good filter that can get all the uh, you know smallest little microns of dust and things like that because we have to keep it out of the system. But if you do have, suffer from allergies, if you do suffer from any kind of respiratory problems, things like that, there are much, much better things out there for you. Um, we have, because there's a difference between air filtration and air purification. The filtration is stopping all that big stuff and whatever. You know, purification is killing all those little bitty things that actually makes us react and do different stuff. Like I said, I'm not down in filters because we have to have good filters in the systems for a lot of reasons. Um, but if you're needing air purification for the allergies and respiratory problems and all that kind of stuff, there are purifiers out there. Um, I'm big on ultraviolet lights. Ultraviolet lamps do an awesome job. Um, they also help keep your coil clean if it's mounted in the right spot. Uh, there's cold plasma generators, uh, work awesome for viruses, bacteria, all that kind of stuff out there that gives us uh, the respiratory issues. Um, and then there's PCOs. PCOs are awesome. They're kind of like the Cadillac because, uh, you know, they give you um, uh, purification with their UV lights. They have a catalyst in there to cause the reaction. And then they also have filtration built into them. Um, you throw a cold plasma generator in with a PCO and man, you 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 were driving the Cadillac. That, that is where it's at. Um now, before you get crazy and go Google on you, what is he talking about a PCO? PCO stands for photocatalytic oxidation. Um, so it's uh, just go with, it's the Cadillac of, you know, filters and stuff like that. So it's the good stuff. You know, all these filters, they do cost a little more money. You know, the high capacity cartridge filters, um, some of the different uh, space guard filters, um, like I said, Honeywell, the PCO filters, stuff like that. Um, they, they do cost a little more money, but, you know, the furnaces themselves cost a lot of money. Furnaces and air conditioners are not cheap by any means. I talk about that on here all the time. There is nothing in our industry that is cheap anymore. Unless you get a fiberglass filter from Chuck in the truck, then that's probably cheap. But, you know, you get what you pay for there. But, I mean, that, that really is the moral of the story with filters is you do get what you pay for with these cartridge filters. You know, like the Air Bears. I think the Air Bears are relatively... Um, or I think they're reasonably priced because if you take the price of an air bear filter and you divide that down by, you know, six months that you were supposed to be changing your standard one inch pleated filter, um, you, you know, it's about the same price or comes in pretty close. Um, you know, they have different variations of the different cartridge filters as far as, uh, you know, how small of a micron you want to get and everything like that. I personally don't go crazy with those. I want something that's going to stop everything. But for me and my house, I and all the clients out there, I recommend purification uh, to go with the filtration. That way we get the best of both worlds kind of thing. Um, but those high capacity filters, you know, they have so much more surface area to them. If you actually cut one apart and stretch it all out, um, it can be up to like three times more than what a standard one inch filter of the same, you know, outside diameter. Um, just because there's so much more surface area there, we can get the air through it so it's healthy for the system. And they, we can also stop all the dirt and dust and dander and all that big crap that's floating through the air that we don't want in the system and we don't want reintroduced to the house, right? So, you know, I have a lot of reasons why I, I like the better filters, not to mention um, your efficiency, because a lot of times we can get better airflow. You know, if you've got some uh, washable filter like the electric statics, um, you know, supposedly it's something about like how the mesh, uh, the two meshes are put together, creates a, some of, they've got some out there that create a static electricity and helps catch all this dust and stuff like that. They work, they do catch the dust, but they are incredibly restrictive. They are so harmful to your system. So, you know, if you got a washable filter, throw it out and throw it away. I, I'm sorry to have to be the one to tell you this, throw it away and just, you know, talk to your contractor and find out something better. Um, but, you know, with these better filters, you get the efficiency. 
uh, cause you've got the airflow going through there and you, more airflow going through there. So we're redistributing all the BTUs that that system can make. We're putting it out there in the house like it's supposed to be, right? So, you know, we're, we, we gain efficiency. A lot of times we can gain comfort if we're moving more air, you know, some of those hot spots, cold spots, stuff like that. We're moving more air, more volume, everything's better for the house. And then the life of the system. Um, that's why I say, you know, these, these things aren't cheap anymore, you know, furnaces and air conditioners. So we have to protect them. Well, part of protecting them is, with your regular maintenance and cleaning and servicing and all that stuff is also keeping the dirt and dust out of them. You know, most of the systems that fail before their time, most of those, I don't know what the percentage is, but I'm sure it's high. Most of those are usually because of lack of maintenance or because they've gotten excessively dirty or something like that. Um, you know, just a little bit of dirt and dust on that evaporator coil for your air conditioner drops your efficiency by like 21% and ends the life by a, a pretty good, you know, several years. I don't know what the statistic is, but it's a lot. It's probably out there. Google can show us everything. Um, but you know, there's so many reasons why you have to have a better filter. So I'm not trying to be preachy about filters by any means. Actually, yes, yes, I am. I'm trying to be preachy about filters. I'm on my soapbox right now. Um, change your filter. That's the important thing and use a good filter. Don't buy these little fiberglass filters. Don't buy the one inch pleated filters. Don't buy the washable electrostatic, all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, get rid of those, you know, use something that is going to be good for the system. It's going to be good for your house and all that kind of stuff. And like I said, I, I'm not knocking any of the air purification. I want to make sure I get that out there. I am big on air purification. Um, so, you know, talk to your contractor, talk to, uh, whoever, whoever you need to, that knows what they're, talking about with indoor air quality kind of stuff. Um, if you're a technician out there, make sure you are up to date on your indoor air quality products. That way you can offer these. I think every house should be offered a UV light. I think every house should be offered a plasma generator. You put the two together, man, it's a good deal. Um, and really they're, they're relatively inexpensive. Uh, with the air purifiers, cause, uh, you can buy some of those, uh, ones you see of the infomercials for and all that kind of stuff. They don't do anything. They really don't. They've done a lot of statistics on them and they don't do much of anything. So that, that's all I've got for air purification. I'll do another video about that uh, one of these days. So, but that's what I had about filters because filters are important for the system. So make sure you change them. Make sure you use the right one. Any questions, hit me up in the comments below. If you are not subscribed, please do so. Uh, the subscribes, the number of subscribers means a lot to me. So uh, just uh, let me know what you're thinking. Any questions, leave them below. Thank you and God bless.